Good morning. Today is June the 5th. It's a Monday morning. Good morning. Hope you had a great weekend. Enjoy your day today. Whatever you're doing. <laughs> Enjoy the chat. Today I'll be talking about self boundaries. See, it's about self study. <laughs> Have a great day. Enjoy the chat. Like if you choose to. Feel free to click the like. Put in a comment. Whatever your comment is. It's all good. Have a great day. <laughs> all right. Self boundaries. So there are seven types of boundaries. Hmm. I'm listening to other people talk about this talk, stuff. I have a lot of uh, audios on my playlist, and that's not how about I, in my own words, talk about what boundaries is. So for me, <laughs> so my boundaries, my self boundaries, self boundaries, is mental. Freedom, mental health, right? So freedom to have my own thoughts, my own values and my own opinions, right? That's in my own words. I respect my perspective, or you respect my perspective. I respect your perspective, although I do not agree. So I respect your point of view, although I may not agree. Perhaps, right? <sighs> All right. So that would be mental health, so. Freedom to have your own thoughts, values, and opinions. So something like, I respect your perspective, although I do not agree. Emotional. That would be how emotionally available you are to others or yourself. Uh, as much as I want to support you right now, I do not have the emotional capacity. <sighs> and then another one, material. Right. Momentarily, momentary decisions given. I'm doing my steps. <laughs> uh, moment, 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 mottery, mottery, sorry for some of my pronunciation. I apologize or mispronunciation or articulation. Mottery decisions giving or lending to others so it's for a moment right i already lent you money last week so not again right now right uh internal self it's about self-regulation i self self boundaries here but that would be about the internal that i'm working on self-esteem so self-regulation energy expands on self versus others or self right uh, not so much versus others but self as we can be better <laughs> uh, i have been social i have been social all week i need the weekend to myself for example i need some me time right <sighs> that's what that internal okay i need a breather <laughs> I need, back in my day, 30 years ago, was pal gone, take me away moment. <laughs> uh, another one, conversational. So boundaries when it comes to conversations. Topic that you do, topics that you do and do not feel comfortable discussing. I would rather not be part of this conversation right that would be uh about conversational boundaries physical boundary privacy personal space your body i prefer not to hug people i do not know that would be a physical boundary right or shake hands with somebody i do not know <laughs> or <laughs> somebody's getting too much in my space and the computer goal at work I don't feel really comfortable with that right that kind of thing 
However, through my, my own experience working in call centers, it's called the buddy jacking system. <laughs> you can have up to 10 people setting in at the same in your own personal space. And you're like, whoa, too much, too much, too much. So again, that would be about physical boundary, right? Privacy, personal space, your body. I prefer not to hug people I do not know. Time. Now that's another boundary. Ooh, how much time you spend with someone or, or doing something. I can only stay for 30 minutes, for example. Somebody wants you to come over. I haven't seen them in a while. All right, just let you know I'll be there for half an hour. Probably tops an hour. Just, just, just to let you know I respect your time and I also respect mine. Boundary, right? Uh, so let's go again through the seven types of boundaries. So mental boundaries is freedom to have your own thoughts, values, and opinions. I respect your perception. Although, I may have a different point of view. I respect your idea, although my idea is fill in the blank, right? I respect your boundary. However, I also respect my boundary. You know. I respect how you feel, however I have, like how you think, believe, feel, uh, whatever it is, right? To have your own thoughts, your values, your opinion. I respect your thoughts, your values and opinions. I respect your, right? Although, in this case, I also respect my values and opinions. See, that's a clear boundary. <laughs> Sometimes we want to clear the waves, the airwaves, something that may miss, may may have been uh, misconstrued or misunderstood, and <laughs> the other person boundaries. You know, there's such a thing as I was listening to an video yes it is such a thing as a hard boundary when it comes to interpersonal relationship and then there are soft boundaries so a hard boundary would say hard boundaries would be like ultimatums right which is the deal makers or the deal breakers soft boundaries are not necessarily deal makers or deal breakers are just like something that uh, you may not want to change in another individual <laughs> hard boundaries are about this is my set of beliefs this is what I believe this is what I think and this is what I know that I know that I know and this is the truth <sighs> you know and sticking to my standard. Uh, however, soft boundaries is understanding another person may have their own sets of beliefs, values, thinking process, and respecting them, their standard. So that would be about soft boundaries. Okay, mental boundaries again is the freedom to have your thoughts, values, and opinions. I. I respect your pers perspective. And then although, fill in the blank. I respect your opinion, although, however, right? You're still thinking, you're still sticking with your boundaries. Ooh, so an emotional boundary would be how emotionally available you are to others. So first, an emotional boundary for me, self boundaries would be how emotionally available I am to myself. <laughs> how is my emotional tank feeling? Empty, half empty, right? How am I feeling? Considering my own emotional boundaries. <laughs> 
you know, in my mental, emotional, material, internal, conversational, physical time boundaries, considering my own, right? This is about me creating something that works for me. It's not about creating dissonance. It's not about creating chaos. It's not about accusing anyone of anything. It's about respecting my own boundaries. So emotional again, right? Uh, how my emotion, how emotionally available one may be to others. As much as I want to support you right now, I do not have the emotional capacity, the emotional strength, the emotional willingness, emotional understanding, emotional knowledge, emotional focus, right? Emotional availability. So clue me in, right? So in order to be emotionally available to another, which would be about empathy towards others, we need to practice self boundaries on our own self boundaries. What is a boundary? If I want to tell somebody else what boundaries are, how about I try to, you know, integrate that in my own thinking process, in my own feelings process, in my own uh, the way I speak process, in my own thought process. You know, and not be so hard on myself. If I'm trying to use words that don't fit what I know or what I feel comfortable with, that would be me crossing my own boundary, right? I got to respect my own, be there for myself emotionally, available for myself. So I respect my own boundary. Uh, that's called emotional empathy. Anyways, uh, going to the next one again. <laughs> Material boundary. That is something, you know, little decisions that are made. Monet, again, that word M-O-N-E-T-A-R-Y is not a word that I can articulate. <laughs> so I don't want to cross my boundary. So I will come up with a word that seems to be fair to fit that word. So little or things that are not temp permanent, so temporary, tempor, you know, something that won't, doesn't last. Material, uh, like giving or lending to others. So, oh, monetary in that case would be money, would be value of money, right? Or finances. So in that case, that would be giving or lending to others. And they expect you to give them more and give them more and give them more. And you're like, whoa, right? You've got your pay coming in. For example, workplace situations where coworkers have their own payroll. They're on the payroll themselves. And you're like, whoa, why are you asking me for my personal check, my personal amount of money? You have yours. You have, <laughs> And they claim, no, no, yes, yes. Talk to your supervisor, right? <sighs> Anyways, again, that's about boundary. So if I already lent you, for example, money last week, let's come up with a budget plan. Well, let's negotiate here. Yeah, I was at work. And when I come back home, when I pay day, I buy myself some groceries. That's about me respecting my physical boundaries, right? Oof. Anyways, you get the point. Other people need to, for, to uh, respect their own physical boundaries. But if they get low, they're not emotionally available for themselves. So they go to somebody who believes they are. <laughs> He's like, no, 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 no. I know what it's like not to have boundaries and say yes to everything. It sucks, <laughs> right? 
So as we mature and we grow, when we heal, we learn how to create a good, healthy budget where we're not taking out our it's a lot of, <laughs> let me put it this way properly here about boundaries where we are working through that whatever the financial problem is some people may need to go to a, a credit counseling place where they learn about what's negotiable financially and what's not negotiable what's okay to lend is that person trustworthy <laughs> If you keep borrowing $5 every paycheck to this person who's receiving a paycheck, him or herself, you're like, wow. And it keeps that, it becomes a pattern. And you're like, oh, well, I know they'll only pay me. And then it becomes a pattern again. Oh, I know they'll only pay me. And another pattern. Before you know it, you lend that person 100 to $150 to the workplace. You're like, Wow, I'm starting to distrust this person. I'm starting to have a feeling that person is not trustworthy, right? So this is why I don't believe in borrowing money. <laughs> don't borrow money unless you know you can pay it back. Unless you know about your responsibility with money, right? And some people will say, well, that's none of your business anyways. Well... If you keep thinking I'm the, the source to borrow from, well, you're kind of making it my business, right? You got to work out your own financial plan, what works for you. I got to work my own financial plan that works for me. You know, I'm not richer than you are. <laughs> I don't have millions and millions in my account, right? And if I did, it would be by faith. Oh, yes, I do. But again... Is this really being uh, reasonable, <laughs> right? Reasonable, reasoning, reasoning, negotiating. If you keep borrowing from somebody who has the same amount of money as you, who has their own budget to follow through, their own rent to pay, their own food to buy, they got their own budget. It's a budget. You know, if we think the, <laughs> the system is broken, Really, is the financial system broken? Well, you're on the same payroll I am, right? And you start opening your eyes like, wow, I think they really think I'm what? Fill in the blank. I think they really think I'm fill in the blank. So yeah, so when it comes to material, uh, is giving or lending to others, whatever it is that we can. Now, for me, I learned that uh, when you land, you don't expect anything in return, right? So if you don't expect anything in return, then you're starting to realize that perhaps the people I'm letting to are struggling financially. Oh, well, they have to, maybe they need to learn how to budget. How do we budget? What's negotiable? What's financially negotiable, right? Anyways, what I'm talking about this is Sometimes we feel depleted financially. Whether I'm not saying any groups of people here, I'm just using an example as a coworker. Not whether that happened or not, that's, that was just an example, okay? This is how we learn. Oh, that's my mistake. You know, shame me once, shame on, on them. Shame me twice, shame on me. Did you ever hear that saying? Well, when it comes to finances, you know, it's very important that we trust that our needs will be met. But it's also very important that others understanding, understand to respect our financial boundary. What is some um, relationships? Some say, what is yours is yours. What is mine is mine. And they work together. They compromise. Uh, when you feel like your financial boundary has been crossed, you really got to do your homework. Sit down. Write down what is for the budget. Write down what is for the rent or mortgage. 
write down what is for food, write down what is for the regular monthly bills. And if you come short every month, you know, have you ever heard been in a situation <laughs> where there's a after the first day of your paycheck, for example, you run out. You run out of funds. You feel depleted. You feel disrespected. Right? So we really got to watch out for people who may seem to be trustworthy. But really, think it through. Are they really trustworthy? If your bank account is getting lower, that could be your emotional bank account. That could be your material bank account. That could be your mental bank account. Your internal bank account, your psychol physical bank account, or your conversational bank account, right? Your time. So you have worth boundaries, really. Your time is important. Your mental health is important, right? Those are values. I value self-boundaries as I value my time. I value my mental health. I value my emotional health. I value my material health. I value my internal well-being. I value, you know, uh, physical well-being. I value conversational well-being. So these are all about boundaries, right? If you go back to the boundaries, a bit, you feel like, oh, they're not trying to cheat me. <laughs> oh, they're not trying to when we start feeling stronger and in, in the places we need to work on in our self-esteem work. For me, for my self-esteem work, this is a really good chart about self-boundaries, right? And as I'm doing my steps, when I'm not trying to overcompensate another person, or overvalue another person and start valuing myself a little bit more there's a balance so self boundary is about mental well-being how's my mental boundary right freedom to have your own thoughts values and opinions how's my emotional boundary how's my emotional boundary is how emotionally available you are to yourself huh. and then others, right? Some people would say, well, Jeanette, G hyphen N-E-T, pronunciation <laughs> of my name. Some people would say, Jeanette, how can you be emotionally available for yourself if you're not emotionally available for others? How can you believe for healing for others if you don't even believe healing for yourself or how can you believe for financial prosperity if you don't even believe for financial prosperity for yourself how could you believe for hope and, and faith and love and understanding and right and I'd be like God is on my side <laughs> right but how can you believe for something that's called faith when you're believing for something to come in fruition that has not yet come to play, come to place. It's faith. Faith is praying for things, healthy things, healthy boundaries, with a clear mind that God is our provider. Thanking God ahead of time. Well, yes, I thank you, Lord, ahead of time. Now, am I being manipulated? I got a question my own boundaries. Am I being manipulative when I say things like that? Or am I being, uh, you know, on the side of presumption or assumption? Would this be an assumption? Would this be a presumption? And study a little bit more about my own boundary, right? Am I overvaluing somebody or am I undervaluing them? That's about amendments, keeping myself my own moral compass, that would be about mental, right? So freedom to have your thoughts, your values, opinions, 
I respect your perception, perspective, although I do not agree. So that would be, let's say somebody says, hey, Jeanette, Jeanette, Jeanette. I found this, these people to party with, and they're really decent people, and they're very good friends of mine, good friends of yours. <laughs> That's good. I really want you to meet them. Really? <laughs> There's that little uncertainty, because my boundary, still, I still need to keep myself bounded. I still need to keep myself, uh, what do you call that? Not hypersensitive. Because hypersensitivity is about, oh, I've been hurt before and I don't want it to happen again. So you get to a place where you study your own self-boundaries. So anyways, so mental boundary again is freedom to have your own thoughts, values, and opinions. Emotional boundary is about how emotionally available you are. Material, uh, this is about money, funds, currency. It's about uh, decisions about giving or lending to others. You know, again, self-boundaries would be about decisions about giving to myself, right? If, I don't if I'm believing for prosperity for others, I got to start building for prosperity for myself. Just like in a, <laughs> in a bank account. If I give it all away, the first day I get a pay, what am I doing? Is this, is this legit? Question it, right? It's okay to question it. Is this really legit? Am I going to have enough money for food throughout the month? Or am I going to have enough money for food throughout the next couple of weeks? Till the next pay comes in. You know what I mean? You got to weigh things out. That's a call about boundaries. <sighs> Again, that's about critical thinking. Let's think things through. <laughs> oh, so when people make big things want to happen, for big things to happen, but yet the little things are, right? Again, if you're responsible for the little that's been given to you, you show responsibility, you show uh, accountability, you show trust. That's about trusting your own value system. And you find out, oh, the value system is not broken. Right? The financial system is not broken as you learn more about your self value. <sighs> Woo. Anyways, I thought I'd mention that again. And that one was about material, right? It could be money, it could be clothes, it could be uh, food, it could be friendship. Do you really want to invest 100% of your time with the person you met at work? Is there, are they trustworthy? <laughs> are they not trustworthy? You know? Because <sighs> if you give too, best, too much in one person, and you give more and more of your paychecks before you know it. You're like, whoa, I trusted that person. You know, and then there's that resentment that builds up. The fear, the resentment that builds up when your emotional bank account is running low. So you got to work on your own boundaries. Your own emotional availability. It's about self-boundaries. We can do it for ourselves first. And we feel strong enough. We feel courageous enough. Then we help another. If we feel weak, if we feel poor, if we feel broke, we feel the system's broken, we feel like nobody's trustworthy, that's about building our own self-boundary, building self-trust, being accountable for what to follow through with what I said I was going to follow through with. All right? If I say I'm going to the store, <laughs> but I don't come back for three days at a time, what's going to happen to my partner, you think? Where did she really go to the store? <laughs> that kind of thing, right? About keeping with what's a, a safe boundary. What is safe? What is about security? What is about dignity? 
What is about respect? What is about value? Shame is about feeling devalued. Well, why are you feeling ashamed? Why am I feeling ashamed? If I feel like I have allowed others to cross my boundaries, right? Anyways, I thought I'd mention that. And another one, and then you learn from that. Some people fail. That's how we learn. We fail. This is a good way to learn. Because, oh my gosh, <laughs> so-and-so was right <laughs> about the situation. Or so-and-so didn't flaunt it in my face that I was wrong and I was making mistakes. They didn't do that because they respect your choices, <laughs> right? We don't do, I told you so, when somebody's hurt. <laughs> Anyways, another one, internal, right? Internal boundaries are about how I feel about myself. Self-regulation, energy expanded on myself. Instead of spending all my financial, emotional, uh, mental, uh, conversational, physical, and time, split it, giving it all to another. It's about confer. Con it's about preser preserving internal boundaries, or about preserving my own self worth my own self value, my own self, wow, I matter, right? My own self forgiveness. I keep feeling that tanking, that emotional tanking. Uh, letting go of things that we cannot control. What is that? We can only control value ourselves, you know? We want to put the value on everybody else and we're last in place somewhere. So that's about internal, right? Internal boundaries, self-regulation. Energy is expanded on the self. So energy is a healthier energy towards yourself and healthier thought life towards yourself, a healthier a healthier talk towards ourselves. A healthier emotional availability to, towards the self. A health, more time in practicing self-care. It's okay. I'm okay. I'm safe. Right? Uh, physical boundary. Now this is about privacy, personal space, and my body, right? Do I want to tell everybody, show everybody, casting my pearls before swine, or do I want to keep my personal space, my personal body, my privacy? In check, right? This is about privacy. If I'm doing something that's very private, that's my personal stuff. <laughs> if I don't want to be followed to the bathroom or having a bathroom door open while I'm using the bathroom, again, that's about privacy. Respect for my privacy. <laughs> Right? It's about boundary, self-boundary. And uh, when, you know, when I was younger, did I know how to respect other people's boundaries? Probably not. But as I matured, I realized, oh, when we don't respect our own boundaries, we have a hard time, difficulty, which can create a high conflict situation in respecting other people's privacy, right? My privacy, your privacy. That's called res mutual respect. <sighs> if I don't know my boundaries on when I'm being disrespectful towards myself, for example, 
then I won't know what your boundaries are as being respectful for yourself. And this is where miscommunication and hurt and mistakes, a lot of mistakes in some place take place. We fail once and we fail twice. We fail again. We fail, we fail, we fail. Yeah. It's okay to learn through our mistakes. However, those of us who have a difficult learning about our mistakes, we keep repeating that same pattern. And this is where addiction can take place. Right? We start beating ourselves up through addictions on healthy behaviors, on a healthy thought process, not realizing that we can let go of the self berating. That's about healthy boundaries. Letting go of the self ruminations, right? That's about healthy boundaries. Letting go of what is not healthy. That's about healthy boundaries. Oof, right? Letting go of my mistakes or for lack of boundaries. When I was immature and a child, letting go of it. Oh, I was a child then. Of course I broke a boundary when I was being, throwing a tantrum, for example, or being passive or, you know, hiding, playing possum, or <laughs> oversharing. It's another one, right? That would be a boundary that's been broken. So as we learn more about boundaries, we learn more about self-respect. Do I really value myself? Of course I do. Okay, that's cool. Focus on what you're feeling good about. Oh, that's about self-respect. Oh, I like myself a little bit more and more and more. That's about self-boundaries. Anyways, as I'm doing my chat, let me check to see what my steps are at. My steps. Well, I have about a half an hour of steps to do. Let me see what my time is at on here. So I'll leave it, I'll let it go to 40 minutes as I'm walking. Ooh. So I might make it to an hour. Ooh, I'm just going to walk now, put my glasses down, stop reading, and really focus on my boundary to... Work on my self-esteem work, self-boundaries, right? What's your cup of tea is your cup of tea. And what's my cup of tea is my cup of tea, right? Somebody makes your cup of tea, for example, an example of a, perhaps a boundary that needs to be reviewed and revised, right? If you keep repeating that same boundary, see, <laughs> One keeps breaking that boundary, somebody's going to start feeling that negative energy towards you. And they're going to, what did I do? I'm a nice person. <laughs> right? If you keep using somebody else's teacup and they say, that's my teacup. Right? That's my teacup. They're expressing their personal, what is mine? Right? This is about material again, or uh, monetary, there we go. The word monetary, it could be towards money, it could be towards finances, it could be towards emotions, it could be towards time, it could be towards, there's all kinds of boundaries, right? It could be towards uh, emotions, it could be towards uh, spiritual value, emotional value, your worth. It's all about the worth. Self-boundaries are about self-worth, right? Your time, your energy, your prayers, your hope, your healthy, focused, right? Healthy, focused emotional focused kind of prayers are about self boundaries Oof. verbally articulated articulating word 
that's about self-boundary. Yeah. Other people may say, oh, don't have to listen to what other people think and say about you. When you feel good about yourself, that's about your boundary. <sighs> other people say this about, well, listen to your own internal boundary. Is it true? Or is it a lie? Oh, oh, thank you for sharing that information with me. Appreciate it. Right? And you smile and you do what you do. It's about you, me being me and you being you and that's okay. You have your boundary. Imagine that imagine, imaginary boundary line between an, one individual to another individual. Doesn't mean that you never hug a child if you're a parent, of course not. <laughs> Does that mean your child never hugs you? Of course not. You know, you respect each other's boundaries. Now, if a parent goes around naked, for example, around the house while changing, getting ready for work, and a child happens to see that. Now there's a boundary that's really hard and complicated, could become complex to try to understand why that happened. Because <laughs> in my house, <laughs> I never saw my mom naked. I never saw my dad naked. But I've heard other people, other children, while I was growing younger person that they saw their parents naked it's like oh oh <laughs> that ugh feeling right you feel like that child felt their boundary was being crossed and you just say i'm so sorry i'm so sorry that happened to you right that kind of thing because we always want to feel safe and secure however we don't always sometimes we feel safe and secure and other times we don't always feel safe and secure. And this is why we have a voice. So we can speak up. Now when we read words, we don't want to be shouting them. That's about boundary again. Verbal boundary. What is that? Conversation boundary. You speak. When I speak, I speak. If it says, read something out loud when I was younger, that meant I was supposed to speak loud. <laughs> Very loud. So that's what I would do. Translation from transition from one language to another. And then when I realized, oh, I don't need to shout. That's pretty cool. That's gonna save me some energy. <laughs> or okay, then when somebody else is shouting, you feel like and again in conversation, one may feel like they need to mumble. They don't want to speak up. Because <laughs> you're gonna get mad and angry. So the shouting comes across as somebody who's mad angry upset and then you go maybe they just need anger management classes or is it me is it what's my part <laughs> did i provoke this did i invoke this did i conjure this up yeah well, you start questioning your own <laughs> mental well-being again that's about mental boundaries so you sit down and write down what is it about me that may come across as antisocial? What is it about me that may come across as unloving? Right, when we're crossing a boundary, there's something about us that may come across as disrespectful or devaluing. We're crossing boundaries, for example. So the more we learn about self-esteem work, uh, we can to let go of what we don't have control over. And just take a nice deep breath and exhale. Inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. What are we doing there? We're ex ex exercising boundaries in our breath. It's okay. It's okay to breathe. <laughs> I'm feeling chaos or upset or disboundered or whatever. When we're feeling that, we usually feel it in our physiology. <sighs> Is it because I know everything? No, I'm getting to know my own body. I'm getting in tune with my own mindset. 
I'm getting in tune with the mindset. That's pretty cool, right? Now that becomes a dance of emotional connection, mental health connection, Whew. healthy connections. It becomes a beautiful dance that is healthy for myself. And when I work on my self-esteem work, there's so much to unpack. There's so many things that needs to be unpacked. You know, what's my boundary and what's somebody else's boundary? You know, you know, and the boundary can come across as rigid and re feel like you're being uh, reprimanded when somebody else's boundary feels their boundary has been crossed. This is not the way I was raised. I was not raised to chew with my mouth open, for example. That was you. That was your boundary. <laughs> right? Now, somebody who has a jaw problem, who has a hard time with their jaw and their teeth structure, may eat a different manner <laughs> in public or in private because of their jaw structure. Something to do with their health, their body health. So I respect my boundary. And I tend not to eat to, to around people too much. Now, when I was raising my kids, I ate with my kids. And I would enjoy my food. The food was so tasty because I knew how to cook. I knew how to put a meal together. So I would eat and I would enjoy it. And my children knew when I was enjoying food, I was in disrespect. I didn't feel like I was disrespecting my boundaries by eating in front of other people that did not, weren't raised in the way of eating with their mouth open. <laughs> so, you know, that's one of the things. To somebody, that's my beautiful imperfections. That's my beautiful flaw. That's mine. I wasn't trying to be disrespectful. And uh, so in public, I learned to close my mouth, but I wasn't enjoying my food. Close my mouth, my <laughs> lips over my mouth while eating food, but it felt so awkward to me. <sighs> awkward. Because I didn't feel like I was chewing my food properly. You know? <laughs> this feels awkward. Did you ever feel that feeling of socially awkward? Well, that was mine. While I was eating, enjoying a meal. <laughs> was I really giving myself permission to enjoy a meal? All those times we were invited out and these different church meetings, whatnot, right? You feel this sense of, if I eat in front of somebody, I'm gonna be judged. They'll judge me. <laughs> they'll criticize me, they'll condemn me, they'll do me, you know? They, they, they. Cause, because it is about, again, my mental health boundaries, <laughs> my self-esteem boundaries. What I find that I can tolerate about myself <laughs> or what others may not tolerate and I, I draw a line. <coughs> now my children know how I eat. <laughs> when I'm enjoying a meal I am quite expressive. That's just the way I am. <laughs> That's who I am and I don't reject myself. You know maybe those are things people rejected about themselves. I'm not judging them. I'm not criticizing them. I'm just applying critical thinking in my self-esteem process. Wow. Self-esteem is about self-boundaries, self-trust, self-accountability, self-understanding. There are limits, right? <laughs> when you're working in a place where you're getting equal play, pay and somebody in, with equal pay is expecting you to give them their <laughs> them your pay this becomes like i think that's uh i don't know that's about crossing boundaries unless it's <laughs> you know it's somebody you live with and that supports you their boundary and you support them vice versa but if you're doing all of the workload and one or different aspects of the uh, self boundaries like, okay, 
this is not about delegating work anymore <laughs> because it's going to cross come across as bullying or oh she's so passive aggressive oh she's so easy for her buttons to be pushed or he's so easy to have his buttons pushed and there's no there's less <laughs> there's a less space for growth you know and this is where people can see it as a um, lack in self-development, lack in self-discovery, lack in self-need, lack in self-love. It could be seen that way if it's different than one's individual personal boundary. <laughs> what is acceptable and what is not acceptable? Or what is moral and what is not moral, right? Because of the way we were raised, that would be based on cultural differences. <sighs> and then they become all like, this is the way it goes. And they give you all the list of the rules. And you're like, wow, I wasn't brought up in a rigid family. I'm so sorry for you. And then you're like, they're like, no, I wasn't brought up in a rigid family like you were. <laughs> and it goes back and forth. <laughs> So self-boundary is not always telling other people every thoughts, every feelings. <laughs> Why people sometimes build up a grudge or through fears and resentment. It's natural. I didn't make it sound so ungodly. It's natural to have the feelings that you have, the emotions that you have. They're actually God-given. God-given. Your emotions is God-given. Right? For those of you who believe in God. Your feelings are God-giving. However, when you sit down, study ethics, for example, what is lawful and what is not lawful, right? You're like, oh yeah, I get that. What is foolish and what is not foolish? Yeah, I get that. And you learn more about yourself. You settle down, think, allow yourself to think your thoughts. You know, not everybody can write, and that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Not everybody becomes a writer or a journalist, right? And that's okay. It's about learning to accept ourselves fully. Because as of when we learn to, when I learn to accept myself fully, it's a little bit easier to understand where another person's coming from when they're feeling hurt feeling resentment, feeling shame, feeling distress. It's coming from a place of, oh, I get it. I've been there, done that, wore the t-shirt, right? Or wore the hat. And this is why I study about healthy concepts. My concept is all out of whack. Well, that's probably about bias thinking, right? So let's see if I can look at it from a different perspective. Apply some critical thinking, right? It's not about loving the whole world. It's about loving the self. <laughs> when we love ourselves, we understand ourselves. When we understand ourselves, we respect ourselves. And when we respect ourselves, wow. Wow, how everything else in life seems to come together create a better a better sense of self so for people who do exercise on the worst self how it would like look like as my worst self and they picture that picture make that picture and then they go and do you know introspecting work okay this is how i look as my worst self introspection work this is how I look, and then you do this second part, which this is how I would look as my best self. And what's happening there? There's a transitional moment taking place during that practice, during that, you know, theory, if you want to call it, or theory. <laughs> I just said that. But you get to concept of, oh, this is me if I look at myself with a bias concept, the worst, <laughs> what I would like. As the worst self. And then this is what I would look like 
as a best self, which is a healthier concept, whatever that is for you, right? And this is how we learn about boundaries, self-boundaries. So many of us, <laughs> I know for myself when I was younger, what's the boundary? Why are people getting upset with me? Why are they telling me to wear clothes? I don't like too many clothes on my body. I feel like it's too tight, suffocated, claustrophobic, if you will. So I got to wear looser clothes. Not something that's so close and tense in my body. You know, somebody else's got a choice of shirt for me when I was in my younger 20s. That was their choice. That's the way they chose to dress. You know? And then when you look at pictures, oh yeah, they chose to dress with comfortable clothes. But that's that, that memory stuck with you. So you keep wearing the same clothes as you get older. And you're like, no, it doesn't feel right to me now. I want to wear something looser. <laughs> Still want to find support for my body, you know, with undergarments and such. But I want to wear something that's not so tight on my body. I don't have to show off the shape of my body. Again, that would be another thing, casting your pearls before swine, right? So, is that what I want to do now? Because <laughs> that's when uh, when we dress inappropriately, maybe, perhaps, I'm not saying you do, for me, in my experience, it just draw, draw in and draw in more negative attention. And then I was wondering where all the tension was building up from. Oh, I was feeling it in my body. Every time there was a buildup of heavy duty tension, that was some message. Like, humble yourself there, girl. All right. Our young man, put clothes that are suitable for your body. Because as we grow, we're not going to fit something if you're 20 or 21 like I was. I'm not going to fit the same shirt I did when I was 14 or <laughs> 13, you know. It's time to change the clothing I wear. Of course, if I'm 120 pounds or 110 pounds, I don't want to be wearing something that's uh, oversized overvalue on this beautiful shirt or right piece of clothing i want to value myself right it's about my self-worth but having something that's way too tight on my body that would be for a private moment perhaps for somebody right romance department for example but that's not something now self-boundaries is something that you can between you and that person. Oof. Anyways, I'm getting too far here. I'm starting to sound like I'm reprimanding somebody. My apologies, because that's not my point. That's not my goal. Uh, so what I was explaining is as the more I got this negative attention, the more I was trying so hard to be a people pleaser. I mean, while they're like, all we're trying to tell you is dress appropriately. <laughs> Follow a dress code. That's all we're trying to tell you for your own self-respect and dignity, right? And value. Oh, oh, well, I can do that, right? Sometimes when we're overly anxious or overly feeling overly disrespected, we feel like, oh, they want to shame us. Oh, they want to embarrass us because those are the feelings we're feeling inside our, in our nervous system, if you will. You know, that nervous system where all the fears fly around. And the more you learn about the nervous system, you find ways of, oh, it was just a matter of, of uh, understanding the message. It wasn't a horrible message. It was self-respect message. It was about self-boundaries. <laughs> it was not about shaming me. It was not about reprimanding me. It was not about embarrassing me right it was just a simple message you respect yourself you respect others oh cool great message thank you right and that is how we learn about boundaries <laughs> so when i'm studying about boundaries i listen to others and it's like okay 
Well, in my own words, what do boundaries really mean? So I pulled up a chart about boundaries on Google. <laughs> and then I did a snapshot. And I wrote in self-boundaries through the text. So these are seven types of boundaries. Mental. Emotional. Internal. Material. Conversation. Physical time, so I feel comfortable with that, so I brought it up. Uh, so again, the time is okay. I only have half hour today, or I only have 15 minutes, or I only have 10 minutes, whatever it is. That's your self boundaries, you know what you can do and what you don't want to do. Respecting your own emotions. Um, and it's okay to have the freedom of speech. Freedom to have your own thoughts, values, opinions, feelings. Right? I respect your perception. Perspective. I feel whatever I feel is. This is about Owning our own self boundaries. <laughs> Projecting is about right? projecting our, our emotional boundaries, our emotional self awareness. Expressing them is not about projecting them, right? <laughs> I just had to correct myself on that. But projection, when we have a lot of when we experience from our bad experience negative experience sometime bias thought thinking process right this is about critical thinking could become as rash huh. not rational like you know what i mean you can become as irritating all you got to do is focus on what is appropriate for me, I have to focus what's appropriate for me. And when I say we, I'm probably <laughs> uh, trying to share a message to somebody who may under, might understand what I'm saying. That I'm not coming out as a judgmental person, you know. Uh, ooh, just expressing ourselves is okay. And if I come across as judgmental, those are issues that I need to deal with my own mental well-being, my mental health. Hey, I'm a work in progress. And when I make mistakes, even in my words, and sometimes I might sound like I'm slurring words, that's just because I'm nervous. My nervous system has been triggered somehow, so I got to release that trigger, and that's okay. I know myself. I know why what makes me tick, the way I tick, what makes me think, the way I think, what makes me fearful, and what doesn't make me fearful. What makes me made me have uh, what caused me to have bad experience? Right? What caused me to have resentment? Resentment can turn into a grudge. Now mental health is about releasing that grudge if it's a big one it takes more time right it's a big grudge the bigger the grudge the harder work it, there is to apply bigger the grudge the more it's going to affect the nervous system the way we speak the way we think the way we believe and for me negativity begets negativity positive energy begets positive healthy energy so let go take a nice deep breath steps and remember be self-love begets more self-love <laughs> and it start to have a ripple effects on others like oh oh i get it she just wants me to connect to my inner world my inner self and that's okay. 
It's not about what you can get from us. It's about what we can learn for ourselves, right? Like anything that comes across as manipulative, I go back to my self-boundary board and say, hey, I have the right, the freedom to have my own thoughts, values, and opinions. I respect my perspective. And if they're bias protective, I could say, although, right, I can do a little exercise, release that negative feeling that I may have experienced, that, uh, you know, somebody's holding on to a grudge, you're going to come across as argumentative, right? They're going to come across as rageful. They're going to come across as disrespectful, not paying any attention. That comes from the nervous system. When somebody overdoes the whole work for everybody else, that comes across as being a perfectionist, a manipulation. So we got to really need to own my, for me, I have to really own my own fears and resentment, what they're about. This is how I learned to, oh, that's about the bad experience I've experienced that I never talked about. Whether I felt invisible, that was not a very good experience as a child or as a grown adult. Uh, you know, when you're in a relationship with somebody who claims to love you and wants to marry you, but they pay attention to everybody else. It's starting to feel like icky feeling, you know? <laughs> starting to feel that icky feeling and it comes across as jealousy. <laughs> so our feelings are our feelings and it's okay to have feelings it's very natural anyways let me check my steps now so I've reached my steps my boundaries are my steps since uh, January 1st of this year has been 10,000 steps last year it was 5,000 steps but it's not every day. It was, uh, I think, uh, so May, June, July of last year was mostly the, the bike exercise. And this year, well, woo. And I think it gradually went to 5,000 steps. I don't know if it was every day or once, twice a week or once a week. And then it gradually became to every day I don't know, September-ish through December and then January 1st came and I thought, okay, now I can go to 10,000 10, steps. So it's gradual. It's very gradual, but it feels good in my body. I'm respecting my self-boundaries and know what I can do and what I can't do, what my body can do and what my body does not want to do, <laughs> right? And finding that equilibrium in my three daily routines and my sleep patterns and my eating patterns also in my exercise patterns so mental health too that's included <laughs> so conversations are topics that i feel comfortable discussing and if somebody's talking about a com topic i don't feel comfortable i'm uh, as my <laughs> A boundary, I could say, I'd rather not be part of that conversation, you know, and with respect, right? All right, guys. I enjoyed my chat today. <laughs> you have a great day. God bless.